We've been on our series, Gateways to Supernatural Blessings in Hard Times. As already established, the covenant of seed time and harvest is gateway to a world of supernatural blessings and the secret behind our exemption in hard times. Why the art remains, God said, seed time and harvest shall not cease. No matter what goes on on the earth, seed time and harvest will remain in force. In farming, out of farming. In season, out of season. In plenty, in lack. The covenant of seed time and harvest remains in force as the earth remains. It remains in force while the earth remains. In the heat of farming, the widow of Zarephath gave all she had and it never ended for three and a half years. The covenant of seed time and harvest has binding on God as the covenant of the day and of the night, once you can stop the day and the night from exchanging position, you cannot stop. We cannot stop. The covenant of seed time and harvest. It supplies all our needs. According to his riches in glory. All our needs. All our needs. In the days of scarce commodity, We were looking for baby food. It was nowhere to be found. And the Lord said, give order to have a seed. <laughs> so now even when you find it, now you can't get money to buy it. And we did. The following day, no announcement, no nothing to anybody. Someone walked into our home, drove into our home and said, there's no baby food in town and the Lord did on my heart to bring you 24 cartons of baby food. How many? <laughs> the law is enforced forever, forever, forever. One morning there was no soap in the house, I mean in the bedroom, they had only one last one. And I called the young man living in the house, I said, get soap when you're coming. Get soap, people lined up in the stores. They took soap to that place that day, that same day. At control price without lining up. Please wake up. No games. <laughs> no games. You will eat food for free. Not knowing where it's coming from. Amen. Has God changed? It's the hardness of the heart of men that has been our problem all the way. You can't be on the giving platform and still be on the begging line. No. Prayer and fasting will never be a substitute to giving. Prayer and fasting forever will never be a substitute to giving. There are many fasting machines in the body of Christ who are paupers to the poor. Paupers to the, to the highest realm. Can you pray and fast to go and harvest maize? In the field you have not planted? If they catch you there, <laughs> you know the meaning. <laughs> My God. The people try to use different things that don't work. It's not every kid that opens a door. Eh? You have a bunch of kids to your own house, your own house that you built. Is it every kid that opens every door? You don't put the right kid up and say, I'm the owner of the house, the owner. You won't enter. You need the right kid to enter. These things are yours, are mine, by redemption, but we need the right key. You want power, pray and fast. That's the only way to get power. <laughs> but you want blessing, give and give. <laughs> 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 
We can as well close because all I need to do is to tell you how to get there. The, all the stories, no problem. The core is give if you want to receive. Good measure. Praise down. Shaking together. And running over. Therefore, by the anointing today, I decree the given power to be released upon everyone's life. Yeah. The power to give is the gateway to the power for wealth. Until one is empowered to give, he cannot be empowered for wealth. Thank you, Jesus. Today we're looking at serving God with our God-given resources is key to a world of supernatural blessings. One, it is God-given. What have you that you have not received? Like I said the other time, tithing is an acknowledgement, acknowledgement that you receive his blessings. And here is my received. Here is my acknowledgement. I got it. What you sent to me, I got it. And here is the tenth of it to show that I got it. <laughs> you know the problem? When there is no such acknowledgement, the next one may not be forthcoming. Because maybe your address has changed. Maybe your bank account has changed. Maybe it didn't get to you. J.C. Penny will tell the story well because he began giving, God began promoting, he began tithing, God began lifting him and his business, they were going and going and going and going. And then at the point he said, no, this tithe is getting too much. Let's check it. Let's check it. The church won't need this after all. He thinks it was given to church. Every tithe given is received by Christ in heaven who has the key of David that opens a normal shot. Ushers may receive it in their bucket, but Christ receives them there. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 7 and 8. Here men that die receive tithe, but there he receives them is our Melchizedek, our eternal high priest. So Christ received them and engages the key of David in his hand to open the windows. I don't have the key, so no matter how much I cry, oh God bless him, it won't work. The one that has the key will receive, and it's not a special person. When he receives your tithe, he opens the key. The door. And it's our covenant life insurance. I will rebuke the devourers for your sake. Not that I will pay you when you have accident. I will keep you from accident. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No domestic accident. No road accident. No ship has uh, no boat hazard. I will keep you. No air crash. He rebuked the devourer based on our tithe. Thank you, Jesus. But our seed must be sown willingly, both to be acceptable and rewarding. If a man gives according to what he has, it's accepted, not according to what he has not. God is not taskmaster. As God has blessed everyone, even so let him give. As God has blessed everyone, Deuteronomy 16, verse 17, even so, let him give. It's by equality. We have equal access to the covenant of abundance. Like we had the other time, the tithe of 10 naira is 1 naira. No, as well. But the tithe of 1 million is not, it's not 1 naira, no. It's 100 naira. 100,000. Can I give 100,000? Because that's why I've not brought you there. You don't have capacity to give. And I can't give you what you don't have capacity to let go. So if you can't give a tithe, 
or one million, your journey is long. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's by equality. Can you hear me this morning that you are not giving to church? Ushers are not receiving your tithe. Jesus is there receiving them. When we were giving offering in church, Jesus was looking over the treasury and he saw a woman that cast two mites. So he's watching over the seed you give, even as worship offering. So those blessings that come upon our lives, they are not earthly. So they cannot be removed by earthly wickedness. No. They're beyond their reach. Far above where they live. <laughs> Far above where they live. Our spiritual perspective of the covenant will go a long way to keep us on track. To go a long way to keep us on track. God is no respecter of persons. To have respect of persons is sin. And Jesus knew no sin. So, we have to wake up and align. He was asking for an offering for the tabernacle in Exodus chapter 35. And he said to Moses, tell them this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Now verse 16, Exodus 35 verse 16. Go to 22 please. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing hearted. They brought bracelets and all kinds of offerings. And they were offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. They were willing hearted. He asked them, he said, anyone that's willing hearted, let him bring. That's verse 21. Let him bring. And so they came and give willingly. And what happened? They began to experience some blessings. They were bringing daily. Ah, this is the way to go. This is the way to go. And God said, no, you have tried. You have tried. Don't bring it. We don't need any more. That's where you are getting to. You are moving to the realm of too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. Thank you, Jesus. Giving God the first place empowers believers to flourish in hard times. Make for me first. Elijah told the widow of Zarephath. And she was flourishing in hard times. Matthew 6, 31 to 33. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Where with that shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, what to eat, what to drink, what to clothe yourself with, shall be added to you. All these things. You don't have to beg for them. You're giving God the first place. He has established, you have established your place in hard times for flourish. When we commit to kingdom promotion and divorce, we enjoy spiritual blessings in return. My God shall supply all your needs. You are communicating with me concerning giving and receiving. My God shall supply all your needs. Because it's riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All your needs. All your needs. All your needs. Your need for health. Your need for strength. Yeah. All your needs. Yeah. Your need for peace. Yeah. Your need for joy. Yeah. Your need for material things. Yeah. All your needs. Yeah. Your needs to get children to school. Yeah. All your needs. Yeah. In his frustrated state, Peter let Jesus have his boat. And that was the biggest turnaround of his life. All fishermen are forgotten, but Peter is still speaking. He gave Jesus. 
all he had in his frustrated state. And God turned him to celebrity. Genuine commitment to kingdom advancement empowers believers to keep flourishing like the palm tree with no more dry seasons. Your life will not know any more dry seasons. Yeah. Two weeks from now, this ministry will be 43 years in existence. Sir, we have never known any dry season. We've never known any dry season. The church started 41 years ago. You still can't believe how what he made available was sufficient and more than enough without ever recording red from one year to another. His blessings make rich and that's no sorrow to you. So an adventure of no dress is in a reality. An adventure of no dress is in a reality. 41 years, and you had one of my sons here testifying that it was 40 years in the ministry, in the church. No games. There are those who are here who are there then, no games. We never invited anyone to come and raise offering in this church. Those who did it, they did it on their own. <laughs> you can get across to the realm of no dry season. All this palpitating, gasping is not the way to live. My prayer is that your remaining days on earth will be absolutely financial pressure free. Yeah. Absolutely financial pressure free. Yeah. Uh, don't try to impress people and oppress yourself. What are you looking for? All oh, my friends are riding a brand new car. Go and buy one. What's your problem? A car is a car. Praise God. <laughs> Someone asked me, he said, Brother David, I'd like to go to the car. I said, Yes. The Lord bless me with a fantastic car. He said, That here is what I need to do. I said, Yeah. And he did like this. Don't do like that though. <laughs> in your life. Where he is today, after too many years. I've left B2, I've gone back to, I've gone. <laughs> it was fantastic. Every blessing of God is fantastic in my sight. Yes. Every blessing. I've lived in one room before, and one of my friends is here. He came to visit me. <laughs> one room, 22 people using the same toilet. You line up to have your bath. And if you want to go out early, get up very early. To beat everybody. <laughs> you better wake up. Life. It's a pleasurable adventure if we use Bible sense. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I mean, leave your size for time. You won't lose your peace if you will keep pace with God. That car was too small to a sight. But we've left that car now for many, many years. We've been flying. By seeing it as fantastic. You bless God for your one room, it will soon become two. For your two rooms, it will become three. Amen. Where I live now, if it's sunny, you have to drive to go from one end to the other. If it's rain, you can't even try it. You have to drive. God is on your side. Don't let any devil come between you and God. <laughs> He's taking your life face by face. And you are getting there. 
You are getting there? In Agai chapter 1 and verse 3 to 11, I mean verse 3 to 13, he said, These people say the time is not come that the house of the Lord should be built. They run everyone into his own house. So they bring him much, it became little. They hang wages, I punch holes in their pockets. Nothing is working. They say, Why, Lord? Because of my house is lying in rains and you run everyone to his own house. Let me see how far you can go by yourself. You know, without me, you can do nothing. He said, So he said, Go to the mountain, my friend, and bring wood and build this house, then I'll take pleasure in it. They alleviate your pressures. Amen. <laughs> if they obey and serve him, Job 36 verse 11, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. You won't suffer pressure anymore. Yeah. But as we all know, every blessing in the kingdom trace the believer's obedience. Our obedience is key to assessing his blessings. If you will hearken diligently to my, the words of the Lord your God and observe to do what I command you, I will say to her above our nations, and all these blessings will come to you and overtake you. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 and 2. Without obedience, no believer is a candidate for his blessings. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. So as to push shame and reproach away from your life. Hmm. Obedience is key. Abraham got out of their country and so Abraham departed. And in no time, Abraham became a business emperor with an army to himself. Genesis 12, 1 to 4 and Genesis 14, 14. His army conquered another nation and rescued his brother that was head captive. Obedience. Obedience. One is not in love if he's not working obedience to his commandment. Whosoever has my commandment and keeps it is the one that loves me. You love me, you love my father, and I will love you, and I will manifest myself to you. John 14, 21. And all things work together for them that love him. So, obeying his commandments is a proof of your love. And things are bound to be working together with you. And that will be your case from now. The good news is, the days of struggling for survival, they are finally over in your life. Yeah. Christ, the servant of servants, was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him. So Christianity without obedience is a life in crisis. Christianity without obedience is a life in crisis. I don't agree. Good luck. I won't take that. Well done. Yeah. May you receive grace to take what will beautify your destiny Amen. and secure your eternity. Amen. Now, here are some of the blessings that money cannot buy that accompany the covenant of seed time and harvest. Please listen. This covenant averts causes. A number of people are under the cause of the wicked. Many under the generational causes. Some are suffering hereditary diseases. But when God enacted this covenant, its first mission is to avert the cause on the earth. God met a good servant from the sacrifice of Noah. I will never curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Curse averted. This covenant averts curses. The wicked line up our path in destiny. They are wishing evil daily. You come under this covenant, curses are averted without your attention. They are averted. And the curser carries the curse. 
Kanaya yo me. Can money buy that? Can money avert causes? If you don't know what is in it, you just keep suffering. Why that thing is also already in your account? What we are receiving this money is a lot. Amen. Crosses are not permitted to walk against your life, Amen. walking in the covenant. It avoids crosses. Money can't buy that. I decree every cross of the wicked on your life back to sender. <laughs> and this morning. Back to sender this morning. This covenant engenders divine health. Psalm 41, numbers 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. He will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. That will make all his bed in his sickness. Amazing. It secures divine protection. Yea, the Almighty shall defend thee, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Job, beginning from verse 21, then verse 25. You are in that covenant, you enjoy divine defense. Psalm 20, verse 1, the Lord heard in the day of trouble, the name of the God of Jacob, defend thee. Remember thy offerings and thy bond sacrifices. So, he defends us against the wicked machinations of the enemy. The covenant offers protection. You know, Satan said to God, have you not built an edge around him? Sir, Job never knew, and let's forgive him because there was no Bible. Job never knew there was an edge around him. When you are in the covenant, sir, there's an edge around you. There's a wall of fire around you. You are not penetrable. You are impregnable. Praise God. <laughs> there's a defense around your life. I will rebuke the devourers for your sake. So it keeps off the hand of your enemy of your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, four, it stimulates joy and rejoicing. Hard times make people mourn. Nothing's working. Never. I go to church, go to church, go to church. Nothing's working. Everybody is mourning on the street. Covenant people enjoy one kind of joy that cannot be explained. They call it joy unspeakable, full of what? Yeah. First Peter 1, numbers 8. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Joy. The people rejoice at the oath. Oh, they are sorting with all their heart and with the whole of their desire. There is always joy. Now, check 2 Corinthians and chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. 2 Corinthians 8. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit the, <laughs> of the grace of God that was upon the churches in Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction and abundance of the abundance of their joy, in spite of their deep poverty, abandoned unto the riches of their liberality. Joy, poverty, liberality. What an equation. <laughs> Every giver enjoys one kind of joy you can't take away from them. I, I, can't, I can't pick on a day in my life that I've not loved. I mean genuine, heart-rooted laughter. Laughter, laughter, laughter. Joy is stimulated 
by covenant people. God's giving stimulates joy. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. He loves a cheerful giver. So you are not a giver, you are just a, you are playing game. If you are <laughs> smiling, my friend. <laughs> Praise God. Can you be paying your way forward and be grieved? No, sir. People don't know they are giving their way forward. They don't know. They think they are giving to the needy. So the needy can go forward. <laughs> he that giveth to the poor shall not lack. You are giving your way forward. He that giveth to the poor lendeth unto the Lord. What he has given shall be given back again to him. If you know you are giving your way for you can't be frowning. You can't be. You can't be. This is what makes the difference between the wealthy, covenant made wealthy people, and skill made wealthy people. They are depressed. The more they work, the more depressed they become. <laughs> I met one many years ago. The way he was breathing. My God. I said, what is the matter? <laughs> when he told me what he had, and what he wanted to get, haba. I said, if you have this much and you are breathing like this, <laughs> use it for something else. Amen. Every covenant made wealth is pressure free. Covenant made wealth is pressure free. No more pressures on your life. No more pressures on your life. His blessings make it rich and it adds no sorrow. So it's Proverbs 10 22. What it terminates barrenness. You should not make a woman give away out of barrenness. <laughs> Abraham entertained angels unaware out of barrenness. It terminates barrenness. Therefore, let all covenant people know that barrenness is illegal in your life. Someone Two seven, verse one and two. Except the Lord builds the house, the labor in their building. Except the Lord watch over the city, watch my way in vain. Um, it is in vain that you rise up early in the morning to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Now verse three. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. It is part of your package, part of your returns for serving God, including with your means. Let's make a little room up here for this prophet that passes here. Children my woman, the husband agreed. He said, don't deceive me. They have removed everything that can give children of my body. But it happened. It secures the destiny of our generation after us. There is no amount of wealth you can live for your children that has a future. But you can engage in quality covenant work to secure your posterity. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3, the word says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandments. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He says, shall be mighty upon the earth. It is this quality covenant work that secures our posterity, not any amount of literal cash that one puts behind, but the work of uh, uh, the, the, the blessing of God that comes upon our covenant work. And finally, it engenders longevity. The number of your days. I will fulfill. Let me, for the short time we have, before we close on the terms of long time, long life, 
John D. Rockefeller was the richest man in the world at a point. He was the only billionaire in the world at his time. Now, the first billionaire in the world, by age 25, he controlled the largest oil refineries in the U.S. By age 31, he had become the world's largest oil refiner. At age 38, he commanded 90% of oil refined refined in the U.S. At 50, he was the richest man in the, in the country. But at the age of 53, he became ill. His entire body became racked with pain. He lost all his ear, all of his ears. His personal highly skilled physician predicted he would die within a year. That year passed agonizingly slowly. As he approached death, he awoke one morning with a vague realization of not being able to take any of his wealth with him to the next world. So he called his attorneys, accountants and managers, and announced that he wanted to channel his assets to hospitals, research, and charity work. John D. Rockefeller established his foundation, and this new direction eventually led to the discovery of penicillin, chaos for malaria, tuberculosis, and diphtheria. Now, but perhaps the most amazing part of Rockefeller's story is that the moment he began to give back a portion of what that he had, he had earned, his body's chemistry was altered so significantly that he got better. It looked as if he would die at 53, but he lived to be almost 98. He said, my life has been one long, happy holiday, full of work, full of play. <laughs> I dropped the worry on the way, and God was good to me every day. This was his biographer writer. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. That's a validation of Psalm 41 and verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that considered the poor. Since I will die, let me distribute this to help others live. And then his body chemistry began to adjust to the verdict of the covenant. Get excited. It's your turn. It's your turn. Lift up your right hand. Thank you for showing me light, Jesus. Thank you for showing me light this morning. Jesus, thank you for showing me light this morning. Jesus, thank you for showing me light this morning. Jesus, thank you for showing me light this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now, it's not enough to have light. It's important to walk in it. Walk while you have the light lest it be turned to darkness. Every time the water is teared, jump into it, make your decisions. Don't drag. It doesn't work that way. Please don't play with it. Today's our covenant day of long life, and I've mentioned in the earlier preambles, Christ died to deliver us from the fear of death. Hebrews 2. 14 and 15. For as much then as children were partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise took part of the same, that through death it might destroy him that he had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through, the fear, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bandage. The things that Job really feared came upon him. It is what we fear that befalls us. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Second Timothy and 1 verse 7. Romans 8.15, we have not received the spirit of bandage again to fear. We have not received the spirit of bandage again to fear. 
but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, I'm a son of the Most High God. Whenever jungle matures, is what I say. Satan, I'll show you the son of who I am. I'm going to show you right now the son of who I am. <laughs> I'm showing you now the son of who I am. Not in doubt about it. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18. That is what he said. I am he, that's Jesus talking, that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I now have the keys of hell and of death in my hands. If you watch Hebrews 2, the image saw him that had the heart he used to have. The power of death. <laughs> so Jesus rose from the dead. All powers in heaven are on earth been given unto me. Including the power of death. So, it is our Savior that now holds the key, not the devil. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. And this Savior, when it shuts, no man can open. <laughs> so, death has no final say on your life. Amen. You know what he said to me? I'm holding, I have the keys in my hand, and I'm holding it in the favor of my children. So the key is being held in your favor. Yes. Death can enter your house anyhow. Amen. If you can see, sir. There was a man who was crying. Say, come and see what the devil is doing to me. Uh, Nothing is working. A man was crying. I said, I won't talk to you under this guy. You won't hear anything. Go and get the book, sit and get lost. When you finish, come back. When he came back, he was just smiling. I didn't know that is this you. <laughs> Look, you better settle to make discoveries. Yes, settle down, settle make down. This 40 minutes teaching won't do much. Mm. We only tell you where you can find it. Yes, Amen. Settle down to make discoveries. He was smiling all over. He wasn't the same person that came about seven days back. It's your turn. Yeah. No death has power to take your children. Yeah. Your grandchildren. Yeah. Your great grandchildren. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. From scriptures we discover that believers don't die. Believers simply sleep. But they that sleep only sleep in the night. You can't say good night in the morning. Can you say that? Good night at 12 noon. Abba. Good night at 4 p.m. Good night at 7 p.m. That would be too early sleep. Good night. What time? 7? No. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That is sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. They, are, they fall asleep. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 7. They that sleep, sleep in the night. Here is my simple, humorous way of looking at it. Going to bed at 7 p.m. is like going to bed too early. From scriptures, I want to take 70 years at 7 p.m. So when you are 70, you are just 7 p.m. Don't say good night. It's too early. Amen. Amen. Going to bed at 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m., 9 p.m., <laughs> following the same illustration I gave, it's like going to bed at 8, 80, 85, 90 years respectively, which is okay for those who go to bed early. Amen. Amen. Now, now, but scripture said in Isaiah 65 and verse 20 of 24, a child shall die a hundred years. 
Why is he saying that? Genesis 6, 3. Yet the days of his life shall be a hundred and twenty years. People are afraid to say this. I didn't write this passage. This is God's covenant. The same covenant he made with Noah after the flood. He made it before the flood. That after this flood, this is what we obtained. It was an adjusted lifespan. It was much longer than that before. And when you serve him, the number of your days I will fulfill. So they are numbered. No guesswork. But as far as your eyes can see, until you will like give it. Moses saw the 120, it was delivered to him. And he lived to be 120 exactly. David came and said, What are we doing here? Three score and ten is enough. No over years. And at 70 exactly. He took off. As far as your eyes can see. You know why I'm not in a hurry to go? We're going to be there forever. So why hurry? <laughs> Where we are going, we're going to be there forever. forever. Let's finish the one here first. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's finish the time allotted here. Yes, then we can now go there forever. Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. So relax. You'll never die young. Amen. No one dies young in your household. Yeah. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. Unto you will I give it. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. So don't start practicing being old. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So stop practicing old age. <laughs> one of my folks came to the office one time they said an old man is here to see you so I was coming out and I said hey, you are the one they call old man <laughs> <laughs> and I discovered he's been practicing old age for long <laughs> nice. he's been for long <laughs> so by the time he came this, uh, one old man is waiting for you he's looking for you I, I came and said hey, <laughs> David you are the one they call old man <laughs> It was practicing old age. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, if your men shall see vision, Abraham saw vision at 75. They say, no, that's an old time. <laughs> Moses saw vision at 80. <laughs> You're on course? Yes. You're on course. It's not over. God still has a plan for your life. Can I hear your Amen. Now, by this light, I cause the siege of the fear of death on your life. Every appointment with death is hereby canceled. The man they said would die at 50, before 53, he lived to be about 98 by connecting himself in the covenant. He said, because he has set his love upon him, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Keep your love with God alive. Forget about the devil. In the kingdom, it is what we receive and believe that we are empowered to experience. You can't be empowered to experience what you don't receive and believe. By the definition, we are now children of light. Ephesians 5, 8. And we are to work as children of light. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5, we are children of light. And now we are admonished to walk as children of light, Ephesians 5, 8. 
And can darkness stop the way against light? Can darkness challenge the authority of light? Yet the entrance of his world is what gives light. When you receive his word and believe it, you are lighted to subdue darkness. Therefore, every arrow of death shot at any one of us under this great service returns back to sender. As we close the following are the demands of the covenant of longevity. One, be born again. Don't fake this thing. Oh, that's where the, everything begins. Be born again. Don't just like a church. Be born again. <laughs> Don't just be counting that your father and your mother were born in Christians. Be born again. Don't just like the preaching. Be born again. And can I say this to those of us who preach? Because many of us preach here in this church, in the satellite fellowship meetings. Don't just like preaching. Be born again. Don't just be a fan of a ministry. Be born again. He said, you must be born again. Whosoever you are, I know you are Nicodemus. You are a nobleman in here. But be born again. Very important in church. But be born again. But whatever is born of God overcomes the world. First John 5.4. Receive and believe the provision of a good old age in the covenant. Believe it. It's a provision already said. When Jesus rose from the dead, O oh death, where is the sting? O oh grave, where is the victory? The sting of death is sin. The power of the grave is the law. Christ has abolished both on our behalf. Praise God. So believe in the provision of longevity. It's part of our birthright and redemption. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 7. Deuteronomy 34 verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim and his natural force, no, his natural force abated. Believe in that provision. Moses received it, he believed it, and he enjoyed it. Number three, stay in love with God. The seed of Abraham, my friend. Isaiah 41 verse 8. And God said to Abraham, you will go to your fathers in a good old age. And it happened. Genesis 15, 15. Good old age. Genesis 25 verse 8. He went home in a good old age an old man full of years was gathered to his people stay in love, befriend God befriend God let everything about God turn you on let your love for God keep burning four, be committed to serving God as a lifestyle thou shalt serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water I will take something away from the midst of you you shall not be buried in your castle of young. The number of days I will fulfill. Exodus 20, 23, 25 to 26. Free yourself from the fear of death. How do you do that? By light. Go for light. Fear will flee. Walk in the light. Fear will clear the way. Walk in the light and fear, fear will clear the way. That which said to me, Back in 1979, when we sense a higher power on the highway, on the way, we clear off the highway. Evil we clear. When you come in with light, evil must clear. Evil must clear. Evil must clear. Be committed to a life of joy and rejoicing. Even in old age, you still be bringing forth fruit. It's a good thing to give thanks. Psalm 92, 1 to 2. And then 10 to 15. Finally, be committed to godly living. Psalm 34, verse 12 to 14. As we close. What man is he that desires life and loves to see many days that he may see good? He said, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guy. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. 
let godly living become your way of life. First Timothy 4, verse 8. The Bible says, it says I don't, I don't, but the exercise I profit is nothing. But godliness is born to all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. It's your turn. <laughs> As the oil comes on your head in this anointing service, it shall be a seal of protection, Amen. preservation, Amen. and a good old age on your life. Amen. Ephesians 1.13, the Bible said, In whom ye also trusted, after ye had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. A seal set upon your forehead and my forehead. Touch not. That's my apple. The apple of my eye. Don't come near. Stay off. Touch on my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Come not near any man upon whom is this mark. So by the anointing of today, the mark of a good old age will be set on your life. Evil will be clearing the way as you approach. The good news is the chemistry of your body is changing now. I said the chemistry of your body is changing now. As you keep saying, giving, as giving your way forward, you'll never be weary. Amen. You'll never be weary. Amen. You'll never be weary. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, conclusion. Your giving is not helping anyone else but you. It's not helping God. It's not helping the needy. It's helping you. God will never need help. You don't service they need it, somebody else will do. So there's nothing to brag about. <laughs> you don't service the need of the needy, somebody else will do. There was someone here that we provided accommodation for, and while I asked my son to help me look for furniture, somebody else showed up and said, look, if Papa could get this for, for this family, let me do the furniture. Somebody else will do it. You are just going to say, well, don't brag and say, eh, if I don't look after them now. Somebody else will do it. Are you looking after the boss of the air? <laughs> Who is feeling the beast in the white? Oh, How about? See, everything you are asked to do as helping you forward. It's not helping nobody else. It's helping you forward. So for all those who are part of uh, helping people from uh, the various donor centers, no one in your generation will be immobile. Amen. No one in your generation will be immobile. Amen. No one in your generation will be immobile. Amen. And for those that are being helped today, as the Lord lives, sir, before the year is over, you are helping others. Amen. For those who are being helped today, I say by the grace of God, yes. before the year is over, you are helping others. Amen. Some have been giving food today, before the year is over, you are giving food to others. Amen. Some have been giving clothes to wear today, by the grace of God, before the year is over, you are giving clothes out. Amen. Some have been harassed by their landlords today, by the grace of God, you'll be in your own house. Amen. So all you need is be consistent in your work with God. Be consistent. Be consistent. Mind the covenant terms. Mind, mind their details. And then life will begin to deliver to you accordingly. So in this anointing service, watch out. The seal of protection. The seal of preservation. The seal of a good old age shall be set upon your life. In the name of Jesus. And every yoke of the wicked Target that your destruction returns back to source. Yeah. It returns back to sender. Yeah. For it shall come to pass in that day, Isaiah 10, verse 27, that the burden of wickedness shall be taken from your shoulder and so from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, a word of confidence for you. Go tell Pharaoh. Israel is my son. Exodus 4, 22 and 23. Even my firstborn. And let my son go that he may serve me. If you don't let him go, I will kill your son. Amen. You think God is joking? You are out to serve him. He will clear anybody on your path. 
You are out to serve him. He will clear any barrier on your part. Exodus 4, 22 and 23. Israel is my son, oh, my firstborn, Pharaoh, with your supple heart. Here. <laughs> let my son go. Don't let him go. I'll kill your son because I must be my son. Did they do it or not? There was wailing in Egypt, the kind they've never had before. There was no family where nobody died. All the firstborn of beasts, of animal, of birds, everybody died. Don't joke with God. That's how jealous God is over, over, over your life. Anyone that won't let you live will go for you. Amen. Anyone that vowed that you must die will die your death. Anyone that digs your pit will fall into it. Anyone that digs the pit for your children will fall into it. Stand to your feet, everybody. <coughs> now begin to take, celebrate God for your dominion over death. Celebrate your dominion over death. As provided for by Christ. Come on now, do it with all confidence. I've received the light, dark number give way. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everyone.